The market is at all time highs. Many stocks are trading at insane valuations. Greed and euphoria is near its highs. But here I am buying stocks once again. Why? Now, those of you in my VIP membership group know that in March and April, when the market was in free fall, I was a big buyer of stocks. I deployed a ton of my cash and I built up a ton of new positions and existing positions to sizable amounts in my portfolio. But as time progressed, you know, we got into May, valuation started looking expensive once again. And I really wanted to wait for Q2 earnings to figure out what these companies are going to be doing moving forward, how much of an impact the global issue had on their businesses, and if some of these industries actually had permanent changes and permanent damage done to them which would change my investment thesis on those companies. Now, in my eyes, Q2 was pretty much as bad as it was going to get because we pretty much had lockdowns across the country, across the world, and a lot of companies weren't able to generate any revenue, which for a business, you know, you can't really get much worse than no revenue coming in. But anyways, I made a few videos on this, but my goal was really after the end of the earning season to deploy a good amount of cash, bring my cash position down to closer to 20% if I saw opportunities out there and things recovering in the market. Well, in the last month or so, I have started my buying once again and because we now know how businesses did during the quarter. And well, I liked what I saw to say the least and see some good opportunities in some industries and stocks, which is where I'm focusing my buying right now. So yes, I am a buyer of stocks once again today at these levels, even though the market is pushing all time highs and who knows, maybe this is the market top, but regardless, what I want to talk about today is a couple industries that I think are still severely undervalued and that's where I'm putting a lot of my focus in. My cash position sits at around 23% or so, so I still have a little ways to go to bring that down to 20% and I could easily deploy that in a couple of companies. However, I'm slowly staggering my buys week after week and we're getting close to our goal. Now guys, if you are interested in my portfolio and you are interested in, you know, when I buy or sell any of these stocks, consider joining the VIP membership group. Link is in the description down below and also if you're appreciate these kind of update videos here on what I'm personally doing with my investments, consider hitting that like button down below because the more likes I see on these videos, the more I know you guys want to see more updates like this. Okay, so the first industry that I'm still focusing a ton on is the industrial space. Industrial stocks have been hit hard and rightfully so because the economy worldwide took a pause and the need for their products vanished overnight. As a result, companies like Caterpillar, 3M, even if you look at industrial and aerospace companies like Boeing, Raytheon, all these companies have been impacted severely and their stock price reflects that. However, what I did notice was a bright spot here in a recent news report that 3M released. On August 13th, 3M came out and reported some sales figures for July 2020 and broke down how the business is doing here to give investors an idea of how the recovery in this stock and this industry as a whole is doing. Generally, these large companies like 3M are what you'd call bellwethers for the market. And when they slow down, it signals the economy is possibly slowing down. And that's what we saw in 3M with their sales dropping 12% last quarter. But here's the details from their July report. In July alone, they brought in sales of 2.8 billion dollars which is actually up six percent year over year so in this seemingly struggling uncertain economy 3m and industrial stock managed to grow their business in the month versus last year when there was pretty much nothing of concern in the economy then to reiterate their position they stated that they see broad based improvement in sales trends across businesses and geographies which is a promising sign that what we saw in july is a new trend that should continue into August, September, October, etc. Now 3M is a conglomerate and plays in so many different industries. So they gave us a breakdown here of how each sector did. Healthcare led the way with a massive 29% growth. Consumer increased by 9% and this is important because it shows consumer spending has returned stronger than ever. Safety and industrial was up 6%, but then we saw declines in transportation and electronics by 7%. So while we see a few industries recover and you know increases here year over year, we still see that it's not a full recovery across the board. There are still some struggling industries, but the trends as 3M says are moving in the right direction. So at current prices, companies like 3M, these industrial type stocks, in my eyes, are still very attractive investments. Now, I don't expect this company to recover in the next few months, maybe even not in the next couple of years. 
However, I think in three to five years, five to 10 years, these are gonna be much, much larger companies because the economy and the world economy really would have recovered from this global issue. And I'm a firm believer that we will see much, much better times ahead. And honestly, I'll even go as far as saying that I think the prices we're seeing in 3M now, you know, 140s, 150s, 160s, our prices we're probably not gonna see for a very long time once the economy as a whole starts recovering and, you know, confidence comes back in, jobs start coming back online, and, you know, we start recovering from this global issue. You're getting an opportunity right now to pick up a dividend king with a high starting yield, with a high growth rate, and a rich history of growing that dividend. So not really much more I can say here. I absolutely love companies like 3M right now. Now the other main industry that I'm focusing on is the food space like restaurant stocks. Restaurants are obviously hurt, but again, I think the worst is behind them, and they are now resuming some sense of normalcy here, particularly the fast food chains. Companies like Chipotle, McDonald's, Starbucks have all held up well, and the change that we're seeing in the way consumers order their food from these places has now shifted to their mobile app, so in my opinion, this will actually help drive much more traffic to these fast food chains in the future, because these companies have been pushing their apps for years, and now finally, because of this global issue, silver lining, tons of more people have it on their phones and order food and drinks through those apps. Long term, I think this is a great thing for these companies because it helps drive more traffic due to the ease of ordering through apps. Now with these restaurant stocks, I think their recovery may take a couple of years to get back to 2019 levels, but it's one of those industries that has held up well despite being hardest hit. They aren't like the airplane companies or cruise line companies, which had to pretty much raise a ton of debt to actually get through this. And that's really what attracts me to these businesses because they are still at suppressed levels, understandably so, but they can recover much quicker and better than other industries because they are staples in our culture, they are worldwide brands, and they managed to get through the worst in Q2 with having their dining rooms shut down. The way these companies were able to adapt and shift the way that they pull in customers has turned me extremely bullish on stocks like Starbucks, McDonald's. These are companies that I think are just getting started here with their mobile app revolution or whatever you want to call it. I think that's kind of the future of these companies with you know ease of use ordering, convenience, and just great value for their food. And guys, every time I drive through a McDonald's, I don't know if it's just me, but there's always a lineup for the drive through Always. There's at least about three to four cars, but hey, that makes me happy as a shareholder of McDonald's. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys, if that's something you've experienced as well with McDonald's and maybe even Starbucks. So guys, these are kind of the two main industries that I'm personally bullish on here, and I'm looking to buy a lot more shares of stock in with some of these companies. Now, I'm not gonna be going out there and buying every single company in these industries. However, I do have my favorites, and those in my VIP membership group know exactly what stocks I buy, when I buy them, and how much of my portfolio they make up. But I'll reiterate this, I fully expect these stocks to continue moving sideways for the foreseeable future. However, I'm a long-term investor. I don't need this capital anytime in the short term. I'm ready to hold these companies for many, many years to come. And I think the prices we're seeing today are gonna to be extremely cheap when looking back a few years from now. And I know some of you are gonna troll in the comment section and say, look at this guy, he's buying at the market top. He's buying now, this signifies the top of the market, all this other stuff. And you know what it is, what it is. If this is the market top, great. I'm gonna keep buying regardless. But just remember that in every market, up or down, there's always a value out there. Maybe individual companies, maybe individual industries, but if you take the time to look, you can find some real hidden gems. So guys, let me know in the comment section down below what industries or stocks you are focusing on right now. Are you still a net buyer of stocks? Are you holding now during these uncertain times or maybe you're selling some of your stocks? I know a lot of you have been focusing on high growth tech stocks, but I can't justify valuations for a lot of them. So I've been focusing more on industrials and all these other things instead. I think sooner or later we'll see a shift in the market where you know money flows out of these high growth stocks into these suppressed stocks. And that's when I'll probably start putting more focus on high growth companies. But until that happens, it's 3M, Starbucks, and all these other companies for me for now. Either way, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Again, drop a like down below to let me know if you want me to continue making updates like this. I enjoy making these videos, but I'm not sure if it actually interests you. So just let me know in the comments below. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.